All right, uh, just getting ready for Detroit. A tough test on the road against a team that's playing good football right now. Won three out of the last four. Um, feel like this team is hot on offense, scoring a lot of points. Stout on defense. Um, very solid, well coached on defense. Um, and then special teams, one, one of the better, if not the best special teams unit we've gone up against this year. They really got good personnel. And um, so it'll be a good challenge for us uh, special teams wise. Uh, just a, a quick note uh, as far as injuries and practice and such. Um, Darius and Pittman and Ture will be out of practice in, in some capacity um, today. So, and then we'll just evaluate them uh, as we go. All right, Zach Kiefer. Trek, I wanted to ask you about the self scout last week. And, and I don't know if we asked you specifically about play calling, but you're always pretty honest about how you feel you've done in the last couple of games. What did you see? Did, did you like a lot of the play calls? Were there some that you didn't like? You know, what did you learn about how you've called games with this new offense this season? Yeah, I think the mix of where we're at, you know, you're right. We, we look at all that tendencies. Um, you know, feel like we're at a pretty good spot on tendencies. There's always one or two things you have to break. Um, so, yeah, always looking for ways to get better. Um, always looking for ways to get better. There was no one glaring thing that jumped out to me. Hey, need to do more of this or I'm doing, we're doing calling too much of this or too little of this. Um, for me, as a play caller, I honestly get out of – I don't know if I've ever felt I've called a good game in my entire life because there's always one or two that you feel like you want back or you can do better. Um, it's just always that quest to, you know, to get every one of them right. And um, so, yeah, just always looking for ways to do that. Andrew Walker. Hey, Coach, uh, with the trade deadline coming up, I know you and Chris are constantly talking about this or that. How, how does that work in terms of potential trade targets? Does he ever come up to you and say, we might be looking at this guy or that guy? Do you ever offer suggestions? Just interested in how that dynamic works. I know trades rarely ever happen, but how does that dynamic work? Yeah, I mean, obviously you guys know what a great relationship Chris and I have. And we literally talk about the roster in every facet, form, shape, every day. Um, so, you know, as it relates to trades or anything else, um, and as you said, Andrew, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time it leads to nothing, but it's always healthy discussion. Um, it's always healthy discussion. George Bremer. When we talked uh, with Coach Eberflus yesterday, he was talking about checking with you, sometimes get that quarterback's view of, of the defense. You know, what what you saw as a quarterback, and you said Phillip really helps a lot in that regard, too. Uh, what kind of things can you do to, to help a defense? What kind of things can Phillip do to, to kind of, from that perspective, uh, I guess, how does that, that dynamic work? Just little things. I mean, um, there's just little, you, you offer little things. So every week, you know, I'm, I'm looking at different things or, I'm looking at their offense. I'm looking at what we're doing on defense. And if I see something, um, I try not, you know, I'm not going to micromanage and I'm going to feed Flus and the defensive staff a little bit of information. I'm not going to flood them with information. So I don't want to overstate this at all. And I don't think Philip would want to overstate it either. Rather, it's you're giving little tidbits. And, and I trust Flus and our defensive staff. And I, I make sure they know, hey, I'm just telling you, you, you're calling the game, you're game planning it. Um, you do what fits our players and what fits our scheme. I'm just giving you a little perspective. And if, if it helps, use it. If it doesn't help, then discard it. Uh, and I just think that's normal. Kevin Bowen. Frank, kind of a random one. Curious your thoughts on the DK Metcalf play from Sunday night. And mm -hmm. if you uh, spliced that out and showed it to your team. I have not. We, we show our situations tape uh, on Saturday, um, so I'm sure that may get on there. Um, but yeah, no, I love seeing those plays. Um, I know in my, my family was, you know, as, as fans was all that was the talk and chatter, you know, through text and conversations. And um, so I, I was saying I've seen a couple other really great chase down plays, um, but that was certainly that was certainly up there 
in, in the same zip code as some of the other really, really great ones. Mike Chapel. Frank, you mentioned uh, that with, with Kamoko, it'll be a couple of weeks just because he's not been out there for a while. With Michael Pittman, is that not the same situation since he's got quite a bit under his feet? Is there, is there a chance he plays this week, or will it just be how, how he comes out of the week? Yeah, I mean, I think a general statement, I, not that I overstated it like with Kamoko, but I think in general, I would say this, chap, that um, in general, we say, hey, we put a guy out there like in Kamoko's time, and we think it might take a couple of weeks, but that can be accelerated or it can be slow depending on what you see. And and I think that's true with all of our guys. You know what I mean? You have an idea what it's going to take. We, you know, we have an idea how long we think it's going to take Pittman or we have an idea how long it's we think it's going to take Ture, but that can be accelerated or slowed down depending on what we see. Just an obvious follow-up. What have you missed with, with them being out? With Pittman or both? Correct. Pittman. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Philip has a history of like and throw the big tough receivers, you know, so, um, and I think Pitt was just starting to hit his stride and, you know, we're getting more and more confidence. Uh, he's a great blocker in the run game. So uh, that helps. Um, and, he, and he just, he's a, I just think he brings a, a toughness to the offense. I love the way he plays. Mike Wells. Hey, Frank, uh, besides the obvious of uh, Darius's talents, um, if he were to come back, what does he mean to your defense besides his ability to, to uh, get a lot of tackles. Well, you know, he's just a he's just a consummate playmaker. He just has that knack. He has that knack to make plays. He's the, he's an emotional leader. Um, I think those are the two things that stand out the most. Now, you know, that being said, um, the guys have done. You know, Walk and and Zaire and and Bobby have done a great job in his absence um, and have you know, provide a lot of leadership and juice and the whole bit. Um, but obviously Darius, his numbers and his playmaking ability has, has already established itself. And so, you know, he's going to, he's going to make a few plays here and there that, that just nobody else makes. And then I was going to ask you, um, how close was he to playing in that Cincinnati game and how much did the, uh, the fact that you had a Dubai coming up impact your decision to say, Hey, you know, maybe we should, maybe you should, sit it out because that'll give you an extra week to uh, get the groin better. No, we were just evaluating that day by day. Um, we were just evaluating it day by day. And if I, if, if I would have felt or we would have felt like he was 100%, um, you know, he would have played. It, we wouldn't have given him extra rest just because we had to buy. Um, you know, we knew we were playing a good football team in Cincinnati. We wanted him to play. He just didn't get to that spot. Ross, Wish TV. Hey, Frank, in, in regards to the schedule, when the schedule gets released in May, do you, do you allow yourself to, to look at the schedule and, and kind of look at important parts of it as far as, hey, if, if we can do well during this stretch, you know, we'll, we'll get to where we want to be? Yeah, I try to I, – I, I do my best to discipline myself not to do that. Um, it's hard not to do that sometimes, you know, you, you look at it, I'm just being honest, but for the most part, I, I, I think I do a pretty good job of disciplining myself saying, you know, want to know every game, you never know what's going to happen. You never know how injuries are going to go. I've just seen that happen so many times. It doesn't always play out like you think. So, um, you know, you got to take it week by week. I think the thing you do look at when the schedule comes out is the rhythm of the schedule, how many prime time games, where are your division opponents? How many, since we're a dome team, how many cold weather games are we going to have? Those are the kind of things that I look at when I look at the schedule. Okay, we'll do three more. Joel Erickson. Uh, Frank, is, is Mo Ali Cox practicing today, and how is he doing? Uh, Mo's making good progress, and uh, he, uh, he will, no, he will not be out there today. Jim Ayala. I got a chance to ask Nick this yesterday, but during the bye week, did you get a chance to, uh, you, you know, watch football on Sunday? And, and as a play caller, do you is there somebody or a team or a particular coach that it's kind of like appointment viewing for you um, that you say, hey, maybe this is really cool stuff, and maybe I can pull from it, maybe not, but I just I got to watch this guy call plays. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, watch it, watch 
on a weekend like that, watched a lot of football. And, and you're exactly right. I'm, I'm probably the way I'm looking at the game, the way I'm watching those games more than any is just the feel, the flow of the game, the flow of the game. And the two aspects that I'm looking at are the head coach decision making, you know, moments in those games. And then as an offensive play caller, you know, just getting feel of and flow of that. And um, I wouldn't say there's any one person, you know, usually what I take away from a weekend like that is, um, you know, 95% of it is, hey, I think we're doing the right things in the right ways. Oh, that felt good. I, oh, I like the way he did that little combination right there. Oh, he did that, you know, he, something once or twice. I don't think about doing that. Now, that was kind of unpredictable. Um, you know, you look at a couple things like that. It all has to connect with, you know, with what you have in that week and who you're attacking and how you're attacking them. But yeah, there's no doubt I'm like, uh, there's no doubt I'm always looking to learn. And when you have the opportunity to, you know, watch other guys in action, it's, it's kind of fun for me to do. All right, last one, Greg Doyle. Frank, hi. Um, when you were at San Diego, um, Philip was a spry lad in his 30s, early 30s. Was he faster then? Was he faster ever? Uh, it's funny. Yeah, I, no, I don't, I really don't think he was, Greg. Um, I, I've said this, and I really do maintain this. I, I physically, I think, you know, from 2013, my first year there till now, I mean, physically, as you're saying, running, uh, his foot quickness and his arm strength, I really see no diminishing physically of where he was at in 2013. Um, you know, obviously Phillip's not a runner, but Phillip does have pretty good foot, you know, foot speed. You know, and I'm talking about, you know, just like, bop, 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 you know, like that kind of deal. So in the pocket, he can make those short little movements and just has good feel and balance like that. But physically, foot speed, arm strength, um, overall strength, pocket strength, functional play strength. Um, I really, if there's been any diminishing, it's been very, very slight but I, I probably don't see any. Yeah, it's hard to see the speed get, get slower at that rate, but um, you can take him now, can't you? Even now. I can take him? Yeah. In a foot race? Yeah. Oh, well, no, see, you're too young to have seen uh, my lack of speed when I was playing, which was really slow.